Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. There's an awful lot of misinformation that flies around the internet and gets shared multiple times. In fact, there's huge followings on a number of different uh, items, uh, areas that are, that are not scientifically um, valid. Um, I'm talking about chemtrails, I'm talking about the Earth's magnetic fields changing, I'm talking about um, Earth's orbit, uh, the idea of uh, Planet X or Nibiru. All of these things are often invoked to try to explain why extreme weather events are happening around the world. Why there seems to be more and more global turmoil with our, with our weather and climate, droughts and massive floods and all these things that, uh, you know, and then, then there's a religious element. There's lots of people saying that this is, uh, you know, foretold in the Bible, um, revelations, that type of thing. So this video, I'm going to try to address as many of these things as I can um, to show you, you know, look, we've changed the chemistry of our atmosphere and oceans with our greenhouse gas emissions. The Arctic has warmed greatly, so the heat balance is thrown off on the planet. The Arctic is much warmer than it used to be, so the temperature difference to the equator is much smaller, so the jet streams are wavier and slower, and it's warmer, so there's more water vapor in the atmosphere. All of these physical things are happening, giving us these extreme weather events, and the climate is abruptly changing. It's changing extremely fast. Uh, there's nonlinear feedbacks in place. So this is all, this is what is happening. Forget about all of these other things which are conspiracy theories. So, let me kind of talk about them sort of one at a time as far as what I remember. So the biggest thing is chemtrails and there's a site called geoengineering.org and other sites and they're making arguments that we're spraying the atmosphere. Now I did a video a while back talking about how the stratosphere is cooling down, maybe making uh, contrails stick around for longer and behave differently than they used to you know, which could be explaining part of the idea of so-called, in quotes, chemtrails. Chemtrails, nobody's spraying, okay? There was a scientific paper, peer-reviewed. Finally, scientists got together and thought, you know, enough is enough. We have to talk to the public about what's happening with these so-called chemtrails. So, basically, a paper came out. It uh, interviewed or asked questions of about 77 scientists, I believe. You know, do chemtrails exist? Are people spraying? You know, is there anything you can tell us about it? And 76 of those said, no, you know, there's nothing happening. Okay, we're not spraying, we're not doing geoengineering. And uh, some of them were giving alternate explanations of, you know, why uh, trails in the sky look different to people than they were before, if that's actually true. You know, one of them, I believe of the 77, um, you know, maybe said there's something to it. But, you know, this is a scientific consensus that, you know, chemtrails, so to try to invoke chemtrails, to, as some people are saying, it's causing the extreme weather events. You know, the idea of geoengineering and spraying would be to cause some cooling of the earth. So obviously, you know, we're hitting record temperatures. You know, if there is spraying done, it doesn't work. You know, or what would the purpose be? I mean, some people go off and say, well, they're trying to control population and all these other things. I mean, these things are, are ludicrous. They're all inaccurate. And the ironic thing is, is that because of our rapidly changing climate, we have to invoke the three-legged bar stool, I call it. We have to zero fossil fuel emissions. We have to cool the planet. So we have to uh, use uh, things like marine cloud brightening to uh, create higher reflectivity clouds in the Arctic, cool the Arctic to try to preserve the sea ice and snow cover. By the way, the sea ice is right now is being shredded by a very large cyclone that's going through. So until we've got about four or five weeks more melting and the sea ice is extremely weak. It's never been thinner, it's very slushy, and uh, it's being hit by relentless long time span long duration cyclones that are twisting the ice around and exporting a lot of the ice and so on. So keep your eyes on the Arctic. I'd recommend Googling Nevin's blog to have a look at uh, getting more information on that. 
So ironically, we do have to cool the Arctic, you know, using solar radiation management. We have to do CDR to extract CO2 from the atmosphere. So we have to do these things, but the, the, the word geoengineering has been poisoned so much by these chemtrail people that it's really high time that the scientific community step up to the plate and uh, denounce and, you know, set the record straight on what is happening. Uh, another thing that I've noticed is a lot of people are saying, well, the magnetic fields of the Earth are changing so rapidly, they're affecting the climate. Well, the magnetic fields always drift, okay? The location of the magnetic North Pole and the magnetic South Pole is not fixed on the planet. Because the Earth is rotating and has a molten core, then it generates magnetic fields, and these magnetic fields wander slowly over time. In fact, you have to correct for compasses in the far north sometimes and things like that. And uh, as a result, you know, people are saying that this is causing extreme weather events. There's, there's no, that, that's absurd. The time scales are very, very different. You know, always look at the time scales. I mean, we're seeing abrupt changes occurring. You know, we've had magnetic field shifts in the past, but those things take a lot of time. And this, the changes have, there's been no real huge change in the last several years. Whereas there has, you know, with magnetic fields, I mean, they're moving slowly. Yeah, the rate does change a bit, but you can't correlate that to the uh, climate. It makes no sense. Another big thing is this, the idea of this planet X or Nibiru, people call it, or some other words. You know, the idea that there's this massive planet, which we don't know about, or haven't, uh, you know, that's approaching the Earth and it's throwing off all the weather patterns. I mean, look, you know, talk, email, email your, your local astronomer. I mean, there's no evidence of this. There's, there's absolutely, you know, there's no planet that's close enough that we don't know about that's affecting Earth. I mean, we have radio telescopes, we have optical telescopes, we have a lot of things in space, a lot of satellites. You know, we monitor these things. There's no big conspiracy theory about, you know, this planet that's changing our weather. And also, you know, our, the, the rapidity of our weather changing, you know, I mean, like, like, it's very important for people to have a critical mind, for the public to have a critical mind, and not just believe what they hear, hook, line, and sinker. I mean, there's lots of websites that are sold on these ideas and uh, spreading that information to the public, and it's completely misleading the public. So that's high up there on the list of problems. Another thing is, and this is what climate deniers have been talking about for a long time, is uh, that the sun, changes in the sun are causing the changes that we're seeing to the climate. And once again, this is very absurd. If the sun was warming, producing more energy, that would heat the lower atmosphere, right? The troposphere where we live. So that would cause global warming, but it would also heat the upper atmosphere. It would heat the stratosphere. Now that's not happening at all. We've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere. So it's trapping more heat. So the lower part of the atmosphere, the troposphere, is heating rapidly. In fact, this year at record rates. But the stratosphere is cooling because there's less heat radiation coming from the Earth that makes it through the atmosphere. So there's less going into the stratosphere. There's less to cause heating of the stratosphere. So the stratosphere is cooling significantly. So th this is nothing to do with sunspot activity. You know, we're in a bit of a lull right now. Sunspots are very quiet. You know, that would mean that it's cooler, right? The sun, sunspots on the sun are dark areas, so there's less radiation coming from them because they're cooler areas. So you would think that the total intensity of light coming from the sun would decrease with suns, when there's sunspots, but it's the opposite because the area of magnetic fields around the sunspots puts out a lot of energy and that overcompensates for the colder areas of the sunspots. So when there's lots of sunspots, there's more energy from the sun. But the variation overall is only about 0.1%. So it's nowhere near matching. Um, you know, it, it, it's just not affecting uh, climate significantly. It's a very small effect, even as the sun cycles through its whole cycles. So what else is there? There's, um, I'm missing some other theories. Um, 
Let's see, I gotta cross the street here and think of something. Um, yes, yeah, so some people, I saw a comment to one of my videos on extreme weather that, well, it's orbital changes of the sun, of the Earth around the sun, and the, the Earth, you know, it's orbital changes of the, our solar system through the galaxy. I mean, ask yourself the question, think of time scales. Okay, does this make any sense that, you know, these time scales of the Earth orbiting the sun and the, uh, the sun orbiting, you know, this, uh, our whole galaxy um, moving through the universe? Like, the time scales are enormous for these sort of things. We're talking about, you know, abrupt climate changes in the last few years. I mean, day to day, week to week, you could see massive torrential rain events and droughts and floods. I mean, do you really think that something that takes thousands of years, millions of years to change is affecting things on a time scale of years? I mean, it doesn't make sense. The time scales are completely wrong. So, Nick's that idea. Now, the idea of, you know, some people, some people have the political and religious uh, belief that, you know, it's over, we're finished. It's foretold in the Bible that our planet just kind of goes poof and ends. And, you know, this is their belief, so it's very hard to get these people to think otherwise. But does this really make any sense? I mean, a lot of these people think that the Earth formed 7,000 years ago. And, uh, you know, we know, I mean, they're adamant that the Earth found formed 7,000 years ago and nobody can change their mind. So these people exist and, uh, you know, I recommend that you look at the Yale Forum communications uh, group because they did a survey recently of Americans on those very questions about end times and revelations and things. And there's, I don't know, about 17% of the population or something, you know, thinks that way. So it's a significant number. So, you know, I see science as being under attack on all sides. Um, you know, I think it started with climate change and it spread to, you know, many other sciences, broad sciences. And I think it's important that all scientists um, think about these things and realize that they're deeply under attack and they can't be quiet. They have to. The community has to defend themselves. The community needs to communicate the reality. I mean, we're all looking for the same thing, whether you're a scientist, whether you're a general member of the public, whether you're somebody who believes, you know, in chemtrails or some other thing. We're all thinking, we're all trying to do the same thing and that's find out the truth. You know, get the truth of the situation. When we know the truth of something, then we can figure out maybe, you know, what's going to change in the future because that's why we really want to know the truth of how something, you know, what's changing, why it's changing, because that would allow us to make uh, better projections as to what's going to happen in the future. So we're all looking for the truth and there's so much information out on the internet that people can validate their own, in quotes, beliefs, you know, which aren't the truth from misinf misinformation on websites. And I think it's really important for scientific communities to address this problem because our climate is changing so quickly. You know, I myself am convinced that it's not sufficient just to slash fossil fuel emissions. You know, we have to cool the planet. We have to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. And if there's a lot of misinformation about this, in quotes, geoengineering, you know, and chemtrails and spraying, for example, this really harms our future. This really harms our possibility of actually getting the public on board, you know, when we actually have to do these things in reality. I mean, if people think we're doing it now and screwing things up, then how are we possibly going to convince the public that we need to do it to stabilize our climate? So these are just a lot of thoughts as I'm walking into the university and uh, I'm sure I'm missing other um, conspiracy theories or other beliefs but you know really look for the facts and uh, that will help us all in the uh, long run so thank you for listening my website is paulbeckwith.net please have please check it out
consider a donation. Thank you.